Welcome, my name is Konstantin Magnus and in this tutorial we are looking at three different ways to create yo-yos. This is aiming at total beginners, so if you don't have any idea how to set up geometry inside Cinema 4D, I will show you three ways. One is using the lathe generator, which is basically using paths or splines as they are called in Cinema 4D and rotate them around in this manner, like so. The other way is by using a deformer, which can basically just change the shape of an existing object. And the third way is the, I'd say, more demanding way, but the one with the highest amount of control, which is using subdivision modeling. So, based on creating and manipulating polygons. All right, let's start. The most intuitive way to model a yo-yo is probably by using splines in conjunction with a lathe nerves. So what lathe is doing is it has one axis, that's the vertical one, the green axis, Y, and it's rotating stuff around it. So if I look from front, I could just draw a shape. Let me just create a rectangle with six by six centimeters so I know I have some orientation. I can press O to zoom right there and this should be my bounding box so to speak in where I draw. And we can work like that. We just create a shape either with a pen. That way I could just make my own custom shape like this. But this is really hard to do precisely. But for demonstration purposes, this will do. I press escape. I have to make sure that this point down there is on world Y zero. So, and this one really needs to be right on the green axis. So I have to make sure position X is on zero as well. And when I see this shape, let's zoom there by pressing O. I can put it into a lathe nerves. And this is the shape it is doing. And you can always press Q to disable it. Take, for example, these two points and press Q again or make it interactively like that. And then you can still reshape it, especially if you look from the side, there's not much that can go wrong while moving these objects. And then in the end, you would just mirror it. So put it into a symmetry and select a mirror plane that is X, Y, so that way it would mirror down here. And you just have to make sure there are no overlaps. And to be honest, this is not the perfect way to do it because I did it just in a very, very quick and sloppy way. Um, let me put this into a null and rotate it around. Um, this would be the yeah, fast way, but also um, we need to learn the spline tools a little better so we can do more pre precise work here. But what I can tell you right away is that the spline can be set to regular subdivisions so it looks a bit more evenly spaced. You can also experiment with moving the, just the last point here and when I want to watch stuff I just disable lathe so I can see better what's going on. When I move it upwards, it gets thicker or smaller. And um, yeah, that would be the way to do it with a pen. But what I also like to do, if I just remove the um, whole thing for a second, I press Command X so I can still 
get it in if I need it again, is I use um, existing shapes like a rectangle, give it six by six units. And now what I want to do is I want to use the precision I have in here and just change some points safely. And this can be done by, for example, um, just subdividing it all. So right click and say subdivide with all points selected. And then I choose just the right side and say subdivide again. And now I can move this point inwards. Now let's um, open the spline and it opened it right where I didn't want it. So um, let's just see what we can do here. I delete the points on the left hand side and then I can redefine a new starting point, for example, the one down here. There is a spline tool set. I can just drag it out by clicking on this rough surface. And I can say this should be my new starting point. So I say set first point and that way I have a shape that roughly does what I want. Also I take these points here on the top and bottom and say subdivide. And then what I can do is I could choose to Let's see what makes sense. Um, choose those two and scale them inwards a little. Use the selection tool to get these two points, move them a little. And that way, by choosing these couples again, I can redefine them further and further. So I subdivided them again them in a little and if I want to put two points on the same height I just say zero same here size zero in height and then it's safe to scale them no maybe this was a little cumbersome um, but what I like about this approach is that it's easier to keep certain proportions and um, it's not like freehand drawing that can always do some weird stuff that is uh, even harder to correct. Now of course uh, if I put this into a lathe nerves this will look really really rigid, really edgy and the good thing is when I, re when I disable the lathe I can just select some points, right click and say chamfer. What chamfer does is it's rounding my splines by certain radii and I can also choose individual radii. Either I right click and say chamfer again or I have a list here with all the commands I used before or when I always change between selection arrow and chamfer, I can just hit spacebar. So spacebar brings me back to live selection. Then I press spacebar again and then get my radii. Something like this. And maybe some little radii by chamfering them here like that. And you can see the angles are really perfectly aligned to the direction of the curve. So this would be another workflow for getting precision models. You can play around with a natural or a uniform subdivision which looks a bit more regular and you can define, well, you could open this up if you wanted to. And you can also give it more subdivisions if needed. So in this case, I would not use subdivision because you can just create all the roundishness right here. Um, also, it shouldn't be put into a subdivision because in the center, 
you have triangles and they don't really like to be subdivided. We can try, but you will see if you go closely that it's, it's kind of, yeah, it's, it will look weird. Um, so we just subdivide it like this. And in the end, you would just put this yo-yo into a null object call it um, lathe and orient it differently. All right, now two other ways of doing it. Do this. So we again start off with a cylinder, but this time we are not going to shape it ourselves. We will just orient it along X again, give it a radius of three and a height of maybe four and zoom in by pressing O. Now it's always interesting to see the edges. It's actually necessary. And I give it 16 subdivisions now and a number divisible by two um, along the height segments so that way I can make sure I get an edge right through the center. Now I will keep this object parametric. Maybe I change my mind about the shape later on. So that's always a good thing. And now you could always use a deformer by choosing bulge, for example, and drag it underneath. But if I just go a few steps back, it's even better to hold down shift in this case and then pressing bulge. So that way the deformer gets applied right underneath the selected object and it also has the right dim dimensions right away. However, if I use the strength mode, I will see some bad surprise because it doesn't squeeze it the way I want it. And the reason for that is that uh, the deformer is oriented the wrong way. So I just go to rotate and rotate it along blue X and while I move it, I hold down shift to get 10 degree steps. So this is more the shape I want. I just have to make sure that I choose the Y. You can tell by the green, um, the green arrow, uh, the green line, and then I just make it a bit smaller. So that way it only deforms the inner shape. You can, of course, if you want to be a little more precise, um, redefine the size of your overall deformer, but in this case it works either way. So the cool thing about this is that I can now independently change the subdivisions of my model. I will leave it at 8 because it shows all the necessary edges and I could also, if I have too much stretching, I could set the rotational segments to 32, which actually helps the well, the regular shape bit. And then I can just play around and look at what I think is the best resolution for my object. I have now a fairly quadish shape, so I have rectangles that are more or less quads. And there's just one disadvantage at the moment that is there's no thickness to my object. And I can change that with a cloth modifier. It is somewhere hidden inside Cinema 4D, but if I don't remember where exactly the cloth surface was, then I can just use Shift C on my keyboard and press cloth. And then I see, ah, here's the cloth surface. I click on it and the cloth surface is a generator that should be actually in that list. Uh, and what it does is when I apply it, it subdivides my geometry in a regular way, which is not what I want. But it can also do thickness. And I go in the negative direction here with, with 0 0.3 or something like that. And I just see it kind of, let's check it with grow shading lines. Well, what if it uh, harms my geometry? If it does too much, then I could also 
remove the minus and say it will extrude it outwards, which is a bit safer. I just have to make sure that in narrow places it doesn't get uh, any kind of clipping or intersections. And then to make it smooth again, I hold down Alt and click on Subdivision. So you get a really good looking model without actually touching polygons. And it's fully parametric, so you can still say, I want to change the height, for example. You can play around with the deformers. You can look for what does fillet do, does it look better that way, and so on. But always make sure when you're doing that, that you go to grow shading lines. Disable subdivision here and there. You can do so by pressing Q as well, depends on what's active and just make sure there are no no issues with the geometry like no intersections we will use a subdivision generator later but for now we just start off with a simple disk the disk is way too big at the moment so we just give it an outer radius of three centimeters now it's really tiny so we have to zoom in by pressing o O will always zoom to the active object. Next, we move the object a little to the left hand side and we can do this precisely by using the coordinates and SA minus four centimeters. Now this is a little big, so maybe reduce it to minus two. And also we don't need that many segments. We get a perfect round shape by just using eight segments at first and we will convert the object by clicking on the convert button or pressing C on the keyboard. Next I choose my selection arrow again and choose a mode. I can use points, edges or polygons and I will choose polygon mode and I select two triangles each time and right click and say melt. You can either right click and go through this list until you find melt or you just keep in mind the shortcut cut UZ. So you choose two, press UZ, UZ and UZ. Now an object has two sides. We have the blue side, that's the one that should point inwards and you have an orange side. If you want to choose the direct, uh, change the direction, you just right click and say reverse normals. But for now I just press escape and we will work on. Um, but it has effects on our tools and our, also on our shading if we don't keep in mind the normal direction. So the effect we have here is we have four sides and inside a subdivision generator this will look smooth. So we just choose a subdivision surface and drag it in there. An alternative, let me just go back a few steps, would have been to hold down Alt key on the keyboard and clicking subdivision now. That way it's right inside there. Just have to make sure, I go back, uh, that the object is selected at that time. Then you hold down Alt and it's in there. Now to deactivate the subdivision I just click on this little arrow and then I can start my model. What I want to do first is to get the outer shape. So I just right click and say extrude. When extruding you just hold down the left mouse button and drag to the right hand side. And the most important thing is to check whether the back sides are generated as well or not. So in this case I need the back sides, so I say create caps. But for all the other extrusions I'm going to do I will deactivate this later. So let's keep that in mind. My next extrusion with the left click and dragging should be without caps. If you miss this step it will look not good in the end, so you should always make sure there are no walls inside your objects. Now this new surface can be scaled in. 
just a little, then we can extrude again. But in this case, I would like to show you an alternative way of extruding. Of course, you have more options when you choose the extrude tool. But in this case, we can just use the move tool. And while we drag the shape a little, we hold down control. So that's an easier way to extrude something. It has its limitations, but it works in this case. Next, we should make sure that these polygons are right in the center. And just by dragging them, we will never find the perfect spot. So I just say position of this object along X. We can look here that X is the correct orientation. We choose world as the coordinate system and say position zero. So just double click here, press zero and enter. Now, because we are going to mirror this later on, we will not need an inner wall. Again, this is dangerous. So let's just make it open by deleting those polygons. Now you can look inside and this looks a bit like a headphone. Also, you can use the same topology for that. Now, before we mirror anything, we want to actually redefine this a little and I choose the inner loop here by going to select loop selection and then I just scale it in. Now I could just select this uniformly by holding down my left mouse button somewhere in the gray area, but that way I also shrink it along the X direction. That's not what I want. So let's go back and just choose the red little arrow here and then we can drag it inwards without changing its width. Now, I think it's a little problematic that we have that much stretch along these polygons. So there's another tool I can choose. Let's go to edge. And then I select the ring selection. The ring selection chooses parallel edges. And then I can do a right click and say edge cut. When doing edge cuts, you should be careful because at the moment I just create points. But what I actually want to create is polygons. So I have to disable angons. Let's redefine the subdivisions by one. I always try to make my models as light as possible. And then I choose this loop. This loop again will be scaled in a little and I will bring it back so that way I get a more circular shape. So you can see this is a rough approximation to the final shape and all the rest will be done by the subdivision surface generator. If you want to switch it on and off, you can also press Q on the keyboard. Again, don't be afraid this is getting too smooth. We can still stabilize the edges by beveling. But at the moment, I just want to create the overall shape. So now I choose the polygons, excuse me, the polygons on this side. Another way of extruding is the inner extrusion. Right click, extrude inner, holding down the left mouse button makes it possible to extrude and scale at the same time. Now, of course, you could have also used the scale tool and holding down control, just in a way similar to uh, what we did with the move tool. So I say scale, I choose the red angle, move it a little and hold down control. I think that's a bit faster actually. So next I use the move tool, move it a little and hold down control. Now make sure it doesn't collide with the inner geometry. So we leave some space here. And this should be fine for our overall shape. Let's just quickly mirror it over to the other side. Now with mirroring, there is of course a mirror tool. So I could just hit control, excuse me, command A on Mac or control A on Windows and just say right click mirror. 
but it's a bit more convenient to use the symmetry generator because it interactively just copies whatever is on the left hand side so that way I can still do modifications which will automatically apply to both sides. Now let's see whether the surface generator makes an interesting object out of this which looks good in proportions and if you're a little unhappy with your shape then you can still disable the generator and choose to move some of the geometry. So for example I could say I want to move the left part here. Let's say select loop and just choose this part and I want anything else that is on this inner side on the left side so the inner side is not the selected but the outer side is and there's a nice selection mode that is called fill selection. Now let's add something to the existing selection by holding down shift and make a left click here. Now I just use the move tool to move all the polygons inwards a little. Again I go to edge mode and bend it a little and if I wanted to just move anything towards the center but the central ring then I can just go view from top by middle mouse button and use a rectangular selection. Let's, let's make sure only select visible elements is deactivated so we can just select all the points and move them inwards a little. Again make sure to go back to model mode so there's nothing that can go wrong. Let's use middle mouse buttons to go back to perspective view and the alternative to middle mouse button is the F keys. F1 is perspective, F2 is top, F3 is right, you can press H to zoom in or F4 which is front. I go back to F1 perspective and now I can press Q to switch between subdivision mode and the yeah my raw polygons if you like. Now you see the model jumps quite a lot. So also I want to keep the strength of the edges. Now the overall shape should be round of course but I don't want to lose the hard edges so what we need is more definition and this can be done by just adding neighbor edges. So what I mean by that is I first go to select loop selection and choose all the edges that I want to make stricter. I choose those and with right click bevel I can now left click so hold down the left mouse button and you get these kind of double edges and there's a bevel mode especially done for subdivision modeling which is called solid. That way I keep my outer shape but I get these stabilizing edges and they make your model look like this which is much better. If you want to see only the edges you created yourself but in a way uh, the subdivision generator is changing them then you go to display and say isoparms. That way you have a rather clear view on your object again. Now the next thing you can do is you can increase the subdivision level because it has some kind of edges visible. I just say subdivision editor 3 so that way it looks perfect. The cleanest view on the object is display grow shading so that way that would be our final object. Another way to get those inner rings by the way is just going select, uh, right click and then inner extrude that way you can do more of those inner extrusions. 
because you always want to keep any kind of irregularity away from the edges. So by extruding inwards again I got this separate ring which kind of uh, yeah, protects the borders. Alright, I hope this has been useful for you and you should have now a basic idea about how to generate basic objects inside Cinema 4D.